Victoria's Secret. You know and love that lingerie brand, but in 2018, they went woke and changed their runway models from beautiful women to a more inclusive runway. In 2018, the company rebranded and replaced the usual uh, people for a more uh, diverse range of body types. Okay, so a wide range of body types that. Then Victoria's Secret went broke. Welcome back. You know, wokeness may be hurting Victoria's Secret's bottom line. Uh, it has been years, I don't know if you've noticed, since the Angels walked the runway after the lingerie company canceled its iconic fashion show back in 2019 and has since ditched the Angel Wings in its marketing all together. It also tapped soccer star and liberal activist Megan Rapinoe to represent the brand. But those changes, they're not really paying off. In fact, not yet anyway. Sales have reportedly dropped by four and a half percent in the last quarter alone. And now the company is actually firing 160 management level employees. That's a move that's expected to save the company about $40 million. Now in desperate need of money and they're trying to sell underwear, they decided to bring sexy back and bring back all the anti-woke stuff. Let's talk about it. So if you don't know Victoria's Secret, they are a lingerie company known for having the sexiest models and the sexiest clothes doing the sexiest things on the runway. So when the woke revolution came along, they decided that sexy was misogynist and said, hey, even though we're selling panties and bras, we need to sell them to a more diverse crowd. Here is PBS explaining it. Its reputation was built on creating a sexy yet accessible fantasy. But critics say that fantasy was targeted toward men, not women. The company announced a sweeping overhaul yesterday that it says will better reflect the times and what women want. Gone is its stable of angels, the supermodels who starred in glossy ads and its annual big budget fashion show. The new faces of the brand are women who don't fit the traditional Victoria's Secret mold. Again, the fact that I feel comfortable in it. Pieces are sort of interchangeable. I can wear them dressed up, dressed down. But ultimately, even if you're just wearing them on their own, they're comfortable with something you can move in. You feel like free in it. People should never wear something they don't like or they don't feel comfortable in. So as you see, Victoria Secret went all in on woke and said, we're going to make our clothes anything but sexy. Now, who could have thought this would be a disaster? Well, I'll tell you who. Anybody with a brand except for the idiots at Victoria Secret. So after losing millions and millions of dollars, they decided, let's get back to sexy. I told you. The wings are back on the runway. After a six year hiatus, Victoria's Secret is marking its return to the catwalk with over the top costumes, sky high heels, and of course, lingerie, lingerie, Lingerie. The Victoria's Secret lingerie brand has decided to drop its woke feminist makeover from a few years ago to promote body positivity. And they're now going to, mad idea, prioritize sex appeal over female empowerment after being hit with falling sales. The American lingerie brand stopped its catwalks with its signature angels in 2018 and declared it wanted to be the world's leading advocate for women, a lingerie brand. But it now seems it's decided that going woke does mean going broke, and they've decided to backtrack. On now, I love how the New York Post puts it. They're bringing sexy back because no one really wanted it to go away. In May, Victoria's Secret announced their once iconic fashion show lingerie extravaganza is back and will reflect who we are today. I think they mean who they were before they went woke, but who they are today is basically who they were during the hotness heyday with a small expansion of their vision of beauty. The once dominant brand giant put themselves in a cultural purgatory and tried to rebrand in 2021 as a vehicle for female empowerment. They formed their very official sounding VS Collective, a group of seven women, many non-models tasked with replacing the titillating with driving a positive change. It's all of our responsibility to do something to make the world a better place. Welcome. You're accepted here. 
no matter what you think you're supposed to do or look like, or how your body's supposed to be, or how you're supposed to talk. Now, when Victoria's Secret made this announcement that they were going woke, Megyn Kelly had some choice words for the people at the company. Because Victoria's Secret has gone woke. There's Giselle mm. since it was last on. Um, in 2019, they hired their first transgender model because, of course, right, yet another space that women used to dominate, and now, no. Um, the Angels were later replaced by Victoria's Secret Collective, an unparalleled group of trailblazing partners who share a common goal to drive positive change. Instead of Giselle, we have Megan Rapino. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> Stephanie Seymour, we have, um, let's see, a refugee from South Sudan. We have, um, yes. of course, the plus size models. Uh, we've got Priyanka Chopra Jonas because I don't know, she's diverse and she's married to a Jonas. Um, and they've been featuring women of all shapes and sizes as, a, as well as the various nods to uh, diversity and inclusion. As soon as they did that, FYI, Bridget, Bridget their sales fell 8%. And they went down another 4.5% in the last year. So people don't seem to be responding particularly well to the heavy set models who are refugees and also men. Now, I agree with these last couple of paragraphs from the New York Post 100%. Quote, now the brands admitting their original formula was successful for a reason. Both men and women appreciate the female form. I'm a heterosexual man who loves the female form and I love watching what they were doing before because it was for me. It caused me to spend money. It's like Al Bundy said in the past. Pretty women make us buy beer. Ugly women make us drink beer. <laughs> the New York Post goes on to say, after all, the embrace of pre Me Too movement sensuality didn't go away. It just moved to OnlyFans Instagram or as was the case last spring, SNL wins Sydney Sweeney and her breast hosted. Now, this is the best sentence in the article. And now we can stop pretending a company selling unmentionables is meant to be a moral arbiter. Sometimes a push-up bra is just a push-up bra. And I think that is the main point of all of this. If you're selling bras, panties, and sex appeal, I don't care to see amputees, refugees, or men in bras and panties. I'm not paying for that. Now, there may be some people who will pay for that. There may be a large market of people who will pay for that. And God bless them. Now listen, the comments are gonna say, hey Nate, you're a misogynist. Why do you wanna see beautiful women in beautiful clothes doing beautiful things? I don't know. It's something with the way God made me. So this came down to the bottom line. And the bottom line here was simple. Do we want to make money or do we want to push a message? Because we can't do both. Unfortunately, Victoria's Secret became a porn company who stopped having sex on camera. That's your bread and butter. And when you stop doing it, you're not making any more money. The hamburger joint who said we're going vegan. What? No, you sell hamburgers. Let me know where I'm wrong in the comment section. Tell me in the comment section if I'm some right wing lunatic who doesn't know what he's talking about and feel bad that Victoria's Secret had to bring sexy back. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Do all that great YouTube stuff. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.